Hello, this is Mrs. Wolf with Understanding Weather Maps. We need to understand that an air mass is usually a large body of air defined by temperature and dew points. The whole mass of air is cold or warm and the temperature at which water vapor condenses, the dew point, are about the same. The air masses are named based on the source region of the air mass itself. In other words, where does the air mass come from? There are five basic kinds of air masses and they are really, really easy to see and understand. A continental polar is just that. It's from the continent. It is polar. So it's cold polar and since it's over from overland, it's dry. So a continental polar comes from Canada. We call these Canadian clippers because they'll start in Canada and they bring cold air straight down the Great Plains to Texas. A second type of air mass is a continental tropical. It's just that. It's from the continent, so it's dry and it's warm because it came from the tropics. Location over the landlocked regions. We get continental tropicals from this part of Mexico blowing northeast across Texas frequently in September, August and September. The weather is hot and dry. The third type of air mass is a maritime polar. The word maritime means from the ocean, polar cold. So this kind of air mass is cold and wet. This is the area like from Seattle, Washington, Oregon, British Columbia in Canada. We don't usually see much of this weather because it comes from the Pacific, it comes from over the Pacific and gets used up way up here in the northwestern United States. The fourth type is maritime tropical. We get this a lot. Maritime means from the ocean, so it is humid. It's tropical, so it's warm. So we will get a maritime tropical maybe coming off of the Pacific over Mexico and then to the southwestern United States. But for us here in Texas, we get our maritime tropicals straight from the Gulf of Mexico. We have most of our winds come from the southeast, so it's from over the Gulf, and so it's warm and wet. The last type of air mass is the Arctic, the very cold ones. It's just, that's it. It's Arctic. It's very cold. On occasion, we will get the results of this kind of weather front whenever a really cold front from Alaska comes through, rides the jet stream down into central Texas. This gets very cold for us. Now, we've talked about these air masses, and we need to talk about what is a front. A front is used to describe the advancing edge of an air mass that will soon replace the air mass that's here in this area. It could be cold, warm, stationary, or occluded. We'll go into these in greater depth in a moment. If you look here at this screen capture, we see that there is a low pressure over Michigan, another low pressure over the central Midwestern states, a high pressure in the Great Plains, and another low pressure entering on the Pacific Northwest all in the United States on one day on this map. The symbols on the weather map tell you what is going on to the edges, the leading edges of these pressure systems. First one is the easy one. It's a cold front. It looks like you have little icicles hanging down pushing the front of the air mass. This air here is warmer than this air. 
This air is coming down from the top of the page. It is the cold front. This air here is colder. The icicles get pushed into the other air mass. It is usually marked on a map with a blue line and blue triangles pointing towards the direction it is going. Think triangles equals icicles. Points toward the direction the front is moving. A cold front is the leading edge of a cool, dry air mass moving into an area, displacing the warmer air and contributing to thunderstorm formation. Please make sure you understand that this area is the colder area. The triangles point in the direction the air mass is moving. This is what it would look like when a cold front is coming along. Here's the colder air. Colder air is more dense. The molecules are closer together. They sink to the bottom and they push along the surface of the earth, pushing the cold air along the ground. The other air is warmer and of a different humidity. A warm front is marked on a map by a red line with red semicircles. Think of those as little sunshines. You got a little warm front coming up from the Caribbean. Half suns point in the direction the front is moving. So this area here is warmer than the area on the other side of the line. It's real easy to remember that. A warm front is the leading edge of a warm, humid air mass, which pushes into an area occupied by denser, cooler air. This often results in periods of overcast skies and gentle rains. A warm front is warmer, therefore the molecules are, have been heated up, the air itself is less dense, and rises you can actually see the clouds coming over the edge of this wedge. You will have clouds close to the ground here, further a little bit higher here, a little bit higher here, and here on the leading edge of the warm front, you will have really high level clouds. The warm air is moving in this picture from left to right, this is the leading edge because it is less dense, it floats higher in the atmosphere, and then it drags all this other air with it. A stationary front is just that. It's stationary. It doesn't move. It is marked by alternating blue lines and blue triangles. St stationary means not moving. Moisture in the warm air mass condenses, causing precipitation and cloud cover. It's like these guys, these warm front wants to move north or up, and the cold front goes, no, 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 I need to move south. And they bump into each other, and they're both the same strength, so they don't push past each other. They just sit there for a while, pushing back and forth, so a stationary front will stay in one place for several days. An occluded front. An occluded front, the word occluded means I passed you up. You are moving too slow, so I'm going to come over you. An occluded front is marked by a purple line with alternating triangles and half circles all on the same side of the line. In this front, this area here, is the air that's moving up. Basically, this air was here. A second section of air was trapped here. And then this third said, hey, get out of the way, and pushes them out of the way. You can see this in this picture. 
this was here to begin with. The second air mass was originally here. And then the third air mass says, coming through, get out of my way. And the third air mass pushes over or pushes into the middle air mass, pushing it up, making some funny clouds up here. But the advancing cold air keeps pushing through and eventually pushes them all off. High pressure versus low pressure. It's really and truly just what it says. High pressure symbol is the capital printed H. High pressure is a lot of air molecules in one space. A low pressure, low pressure symbol is L, capital printed L. This is stormy weather. Since there is low air pressure, that means there are fewer air molecules allowing water vapor to be in place of the spaces between the air molecules. So a low pressure system is usually warmer and wetter. A high pressure system is usually cooler and drier. Notice on the map, there's usually, usually not always, clouds close to a low pressure system whereas the high pressure system with a lot of air molecules pushing the water out of the way, it's usually clear and dry. Thank you very much. Make sure you've done your Cornell notes. Go Breezy!